The years of research and development would now be put to the ultimate test. The first flight into space of Shuttle Columbia with astronauts at the controls. There was an air of excitement as the brand new shuttle moved from its processing facility at the Kennedy Space Center to the vehicle assembly building where it would be mated with rockets and fuel tank and rolled out to the launch pad. Never before had a new spacecraft been flown this way. Previous Mercury, Gemini, and Apollos were man-rated in advance, meaning that unmanned flights were flown before putting an astronaut crew on board. Despite nagging problems with engines and protective tiles, there was a quiet optimism. Long-time space workers knew from past experience with the lunar landing program that design and engineering problems do get worked out. After one false start, astronauts John Young and Robert Crippen headed for the launch pad. Columbia's maiden flight would be brief, just 54 and a half hours, 36 orbits, and return to Earth. But it signaled the beginning of a reusable space transportation system. Checking to ensure that everything is in the proper place. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. We've gone from 8 to start. refurbished and rolled out to the pad, astronauts Joe Engel and Dick Truly flew Columbia into space again. While an imaging radar system mapped distant Earth, the crew made a critical test of a Canadian-developed mechanical arm that would later place payloads into and out of orbit. Okay, we copy. Thank you. Looks like it's a little, it's a little cloudy out here, Sally. It's good thing Mr. Ray sees this And we can hear it crank up on board. Okay, stand by. Okay, we see fan A on and we'd like you to take Bravo. As Columbia landed the second time, the circle was complete. A new generation of space travel had begun.